You are listening to the Icehouse Podcast, hosting conversations with gritty Kiwi business owners and leaders and industry leading minds. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of the Ice House podcast. My name is Briar Stewart. I am the community manager, and I get the privilege of chatting to people that are part of our network, part of our community of business owners, and in this case, business coaches. And so today we're having a conversation with Craig Neal. He is a new coach here at the Ice House, and this conversation's purpose is to get to know Craig, his experience, and what he's passionate about. So thanks heaps for your time today, Craig. Thanks. Uh, I love the, yeah, the privilege of being here. It's great. Appreciate it. No worries. Yeah, looking forward to it. Well, as you know, we like to start with some quick fire. So I like to ask this first question, bit of fun. What's your coffee order? A uh, small flat white. Strong, stronger the better. Nice. I'm with you on that one. First ever job. McDonald's restaurants, ah. uh, yeah, part-time after school, and then that turned into full-time. So McDonald's in my blood early on. Awesome. That's super in the veins, cool. as they say. Yeah, I like that. Awesome. When are you most relaxed? Uh, with uh, hanging out with uh, with friends, I think. Uh, mm. People that are close to me and and having a good chin wag and, and solving the problems of the world, I think, is uh, when I'm most relaxed. Cool. That's Depending good. on the problems, of course. But, exactly. Uh, I was like, those, those combos can sometimes go two ways, but I'm glad it's uh, mainly relaxing, those conversations yeah. with friends. Um, when are you most productive? I think after exercise, I uh, get a little bit of a buzz, a little bit of a high. Uh, probably don't do it often enough, so maybe that leads to a little bit of unproductivity. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, um, exercise, um, love getting out and about. Uh, and and mountain biking, um, yeah. Good fun. Favorite spot in the world? Chamonix in France uh, for the township and the ski fields. Uh, Do you spend lots of time there? there? Have been there a couple of times, uh, and will no doubt um, go go back. It's such a beautiful part of the world. Uh, nice to hang out and 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 great to ski. Very cool. And what is a book or a podcast that you recommend? Oh, look, I can't go past uh, Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I think it's my go-to uh, and a book that I've um, lived in and out of and recommended to other people. Uh, uh, some really good uh, basic premises for living life. Great answer. Awesome. Well, yeah, you passed the first test of fun, quick-fire questions. Um, Thanks. And we'll jump, we'll jump into um, some of the um, deeper questions about yourself, Craig. So I'd like to start with this one. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're passionate about. Certainly uh, helping other people. I think uh, I've worked hard through uh, various management positions um, throughout my, uh, I guess, corporate career and own businesses. Uh, and now I find my passion is, is really about giving back and uh, taking some of the, the, the lessons, uh, not always the good lessons, the sort of life of hard knocks, mm. uh, and, and uh, helping other people uh, find, um, I, I guess, find a path that is uh, more optimal. Is, um, you know, it's certainly uh, my, my career passion, uh, and, and personally, from a, a, a family perspective, fortunate enough to have a, a new grandchild, uh, so, uh, having family around and, and those friends to hang out with and, and relax, uh, with a bit of exercise. Yeah, that's great. Do you think your passion for helping others, has that over time become a bigger part of your world or was it always sure. part of, yeah. How did that look for you? Yeah, I think, um, early on as we all are in our, in our uh, careers while we're climbing either the corporate ladder or, or aspiring to uh, to earn more money and own things, um, it tends to be a little bit more selfish. Mm. Uh, selfish about those that you're caring for and, and, and that are dependent on you. But for me, as uh, that sort of middle-aged uh, and having enjoyed the fruits of uh, working hard, then mm. very much uh, just the natural desire of, of wanting to help others and wanting to see others uh, progress uh, in a in a similar way mm, yeah and your career journey what has that looked like you know we've touched on a few things but what does it look like and how has that then led to helping others through business coaching 
Yeah, lots of management positions. I think in my late teens, uh, in the McDonald's days, uh, I was uh, thrust into running shifts and, and looking after staff and then um, in finishing university and being invited uh, into McDonald's as a career it was uh, all about managing groups of people. And I think uh, as much as the focus in a, in a management role in that environment is about uh, revenue and about uh, making money, for me, the passion was uh, enabling people to be able to do their, their, their jobs a whole bunch better. So my management uh, passion, my management uh, strength was always um, working through others uh, to mm. achieve the results. And it got to a point maybe 10 years ago where I wanted to uh, study uh, and take uh, people development a whole bunch more seriously. Yeah. Uh, fortunate enough to be in a position that I could afford to step off the, uh, I, I guess, the hardcore uh, money making venture mm -hmm. of, of working in corporates or owning one's own business and 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 take time out to uh, learn study and uh, gain a whole bunch more knowledge about um, helping others mm -hmm. uh, so having always had a passion for managing people uh, and looking after people and in, in teams that I was responsible for I wanted to um, formalize that and and uh, more of a way that uh, meant I could um, work alongside, um, coach, guide, facilitate, and help people uh, get the get the best out of the situation that uh, they find, found themselves in. Uh, from a from a business perspective, my uh, connections that I've built up over the years just naturally took me back to uh, business owners uh, and helping career people in some of the corporates that I that I'd worked in, um, and. Yeah, the, the intricacies of uh, being a business owner and, and managing the commercial side of things while looking after oneself mm. and uh, looking after uh, a group of employees was um, a balance that uh, was naturally uh, attracted to and, mm. uh, and have found that uh, helping business owners identify and develop their talent and look after their talent and then around their own personal uh, goals and aspirations is uh, is a bit of a sweet spot. Mm, that's really cool to hear. What was that study you uh, you formally did? I was fortunate enough to have a a couple of years of of gap year for education, and I did a um, um, professional coaching diploma mm. out of the Southern Institute of Technology, and I did a, a diploma in um, positive psychology out of the Langley uh, Institute in Australia. Wow. Uh, and uh, happened to do a um, ski instructor's qualification at the same time uh, as part of a gap year that was uh, spent down in Wanaka. Uh, while I studied, of course, in the evenings uh, and, and played during the day. So it was kind of ticking off a few bucket lists um, at a time that uh, just wanted to move in a different direction. And, and I knew I needed to take some of the, the books I'd read, the theories that I'd researched and, and formalise it. Uh, yeah. and uh, and become a little bit more um, academically qualified uh, yeah. to be able to to work in the coaching field. Wow, that's so, so interesting. And yeah, I, I you know, obviously you hear about gap years prior to sort of jumping into the corporate world or um, but to hear it you know a little bit later on in the piece is is a really interesting perspective. How did it feel for you? Sorry, I'm already completely going off script, um, <laughs> but that's fun. Um, how did it feel for you jumping out of the corporate and management space into that um, gap year or two to study? Did that bring up anything for you? It, it kind of felt natural. It happened cool. um, progressively. I was doing uh, project management, consulting, uh, become self-employed. Yeah. Uh, wanting to uh, work more for myself yep. uh, and um, was fortunate enough with a, um, a, a wife that was um, very supportive of me taking some time out and, and just taking a step change. I think we get to, it was probably middle-aged back then, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit more than middle-aged, um, but um, I think we um, yeah spend a whole bunch of time aspiring to certain goals uh, and having a vision for how we how we want to live our life and then and then more often than not through through that mid-age uh you get the opportunity to reflect on mm. uh, where it's going uh and how you'd like to live the the the, the second half uh or the second chapter yeah. of, 
uh, of what you contribute to. And I decided that um, I wanted to work with people first and foremost yeah. uh, and and help people from a, uh, from the perspective of uh, yeah, putting their, their, their best version of themselves forward in, uh, in the business world and particularly um, where people own their own business. Very cool. Thank you for unpacking that. Uh, very interesting. And uh, yeah, I can obviously tell that you're very passionate now about what you do. Um, now looking at that sort of second chapter of life and jumping into it. So I'd love to hear what does a day of a day in the life of Craig look like now? Well, a whole bunch of um, different things. I think the value of uh, making a career change uh, mm. was uh, any one day is is not the same. I am spending uh, time uh, probably relative to what's happened with the pandemic, uh, relative to what's now happening in uh, the economic cycle of business owners, uh, doing a lot of problem solving, um, getting out of bed in the morning and, and uh, I guess reflecting over a couple of cups of coffee, which is um, probably, uh, where well, you asked what I was passionate about, a good <laughs> cup of coffee is certainly what I'm passionate about. Uh, yeah. And um, helping helping business owners solve solve problems is what uh, is what I find a day looks like on any given week or week of the month. Uh, Brilliant. Yeah, and helping those business owners more and more. I uh, I, I think my age and my experience uh, lends me towards working with uh, with baby boomer. Uh, business owners and there's a whole bunch of uh, us on just on the cusp of being a baby boomer mm -hmm. that are that are looking uh, towards their retirement yeah. uh, and uh, so yeah bouncing around on any given day just having coffee chats with uh, as many business owners that are looking for uh, help with uh, the next transition uh, yeah. is uh, really what a day looks like no one day is the same I love that. Makes Great. Exciting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Great variety. So you were based in Wanaka for those two years. Where whereabouts are you based now? I live in Blenheim. We were yeah. fortunate enough. Uh, we went to uh, my wife and I went to Dubai uh, after being down in, in Wanaka for uh, for just a season. I was just yeah. I was I think I was only allowed to be down there skiing for for four months. So yeah. I, uh, I I used the time I had, and then we went to Dubai, and I finished my study. Uh, living in Dubai, and uh, while my wife worked for Fonterra, uh, when we came back, uh, we knew we didn't want to go back to Auckland. We've lived there all our lives, and we wanted to try a different part of New Zealand, and an opportunity mm -hmm. came up uh, to move to Blenheim, oh. uh, and I've been basing myself uh, in a really nice house, a uh, nice part of town uh, with, a, with, a, yeah, with a great bunch of uh, friends and now business acquaintances down here in, in Blenheim. Mm, it's such a great business community down there. Uh, every time I go down there, I'm just like, wow, there's something about that sort of local connection, right? Uh, that makes it a special place to be. Yeah. And this part of the world really loves Ice House. There's a whole bunch of uh, companies, and as you well know, that and individuals that have been through the various programs. And uh, I think that was another one of the connections for me in, in joining Ice House was that uh, so many people down here talk so highly of the uh, participation uh, that, that, that they've had and the contribution that Ice House has made. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, there's a couple of people that um, I'm having sort of those coffee chats with uh, that are already associated with Ice House and, and maybe it's the opportunity to get a whole bunch more people through the through the programs as well. Brilliant. Yeah, love to hear that. Um, what's one thing you wish you knew at the start of your career journey? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know that it's career related necessarily, but I think one one personal thing that I wish I knew was to uh, listen more and speak less. Mm, yeah, uh, I think uh, at the start of my career journey, I think I was pretty bullshit in regards to um, what I think I I, I, I thought I knew uh, and how I thought I could uh, manage to achieve results. And I think looking back, uh, there was more that I didn't know than what there was uh, in regards to the knowledge that I had. So uh, listening more, speaking less, uh, and, and one of those cubby habits of uh, seeking first to understand to make sure uh, that I uh, don't make too many assumptions and have the true picture of a situation. I think, um, yeah, I, I think that would be very relevant in any role that I had played uh, looking back. 
Uh, and I think probably through various stages at each progression through management, probably got a little bit more, uh, a little bit more boxy in what I thought I knew. Uh, yeah. And then I think you get to a certain age when you when you realise it's a whole bunch more to find out. So uh, mm. yeah, that's really Being wise. open to learning to learning more about other people and 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 gaining more knowledge. And I guess that's uh, somewhat ten years ago mm. uh, decided to uh, to take that a bit more seriously and go uh, educate myself some more. Very cool. I love that. Um, you're now a coach. Uh, what would you say your expertise is in coaching specifically? Certainly with business owners uh, yeah. and understanding uh, the stresses and strains of owning a business, uh, the commercial reality of making a business work, uh, while um, balancing what's going on personally. And I think that the, the battle that uh, particularly um, somewhat middle-aged uh, and even males, dare I say, um, mm-hmm. go through in regards uh the battle to achieve and and be successful and have their business uh, being seen as being super successful at the expense of themselves uh, is uh, something that I think I've seen and observed. And I think that that's probably uh, my strength is to be able to help a person, a business owner, understand uh, that, that mix between what's best for them Mm. what's best for their business and how they and their business fit in. Mm, Yeah, that's amazing. And even just from doing this podcast, you know, I've heard story after story of how hard it is to get that balance. Um, And so such a great skill to come in and be able to guide business owners with those, I guess that questioning to go, hey, have you thought about this? Hey, you know, what about this perspective? So I know that will be very valuable. Yeah, it's... um... Yeah, I think it's too easy to get carried away in uh, in running a business or even having a job and losing sight of uh, one's personal purpose and why uh, and to take some time out and, and clarify that what uh, one is doing is uh, is best for their well-being uh, and, and bringing them joy. And I think uh, helping unpack uh, a person's... Uh, reason for doing what they're doing and the reason that they want to achieve what it is they think they're striving for Mm. often helps people uh, realign and readjust uh, maybe change jobs uh, possibly sell their business maybe add to their business uh, but certainly uh, helping them then understand that uh, having uh, surrounding themselves with some good quality people is Mm. uh, the key to um, to moving forward yeah, that's gold. Where would you say the best place for someone to start is if they're starting to maybe not spiral out of control, but sort of go like, okay, there's a lot on my plate. I need to realign. W- what would you say just off the top of your head would be a good place for someone to start in that position? Being vulnerable enough to reach out and and have a conversation with uh, nearest and dearest and and possibly seek uh, more professional input. Uh, If it's not professional, an outsider's view. I Mm. think the challenge when we're, uh, any one of us are spiraling in some form or other is to lose sight of um, the the perspective that one has of the situation. So having an opportunity to unpack and understand why they might be feeling the way that they are about the situation that they find themselves in, Mm -hmm. I think helps people come to terms with the cause and effect of a a problem. Um, I I guess perception is reality. uh, And when somebody can have a conversation with a third party in whatever form, it can be a best friend over a cup of coffee. It it, it doesn't have to be somebody that they necessarily pay for uh, coaching or advice. Yeah. Uh, but being prepared to sit down and say, hey, this just isn't working for me at this particular point in time, being brave enough, being vulnerable enough to say something's got to change and I need to seek solutions to what or possible solutions before I even choose what the next uh, mm-hmm. approach may be, I think is uh, is the first step is reaching out. 
Yeah, I really like that advice and just taking everything that's going on on your head out, you know, and actually being able to communicate it with someone else, I'm sure would be very yeah. helpful for business owners. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, for, uh, if every business owner or even every person could just find that person that helps them gain a different perspective, uh, mm. possibly a more healthier perspective and helps them uh, brainstorm and unpack what uh, some solutions may be to mm. the situation they find themselves in, uh, I think becomes um, um, enlightening for people and it, and it lifts the weight off folks' shoulders if, uh, if they can just take the time to, to have a chat. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's really good. Thanks for unpacking that. Uh, as a coach, you know, I'm sure there's, there's yeah, favorite parts of it and maybe challenges. What would be a favorite element of being a coach and maybe a challenge as well? Yeah, the favorite for me is um, seeing seeing aha moments. Yeah, is cool. When you're having a conversation and you're asking questions and then a person sits back and goes, oh, wow. Mm -hmm. they they just see something that the, that they've been struggling with in a different light yeah uh that is really cool uh um and and that's often about the a conclusion that the person themselves has drawn it's never uh something that is that is advised or given to it's something that they draw their own conclusions Brilliant. Um, on the other hand the challenge is uh, is not jumping in uh mm -hmm. in, a, in a coaching session in particular uh, and offering advice, uh, offering offering solutions, because uh, I've learned that one can never know exactly what's going on for any one person, even over a series of, of mm. coaching catch-ups, uh, and that uh, the person themselves uh, uh, does well when they come up with their own solutions and they, and they see things for themselves. So the challenge for me is, uh, uh, with, a, with a few grey hairs and a bit of experience, is mm -hmm. not to make assumptions for any one person uh mm. and and jump to that um I know what you should do yes uh and and just be patient and and allow the 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 uh, I guess the layers of the onion to be peeled back mm. that would be so difficult at times I'm sure there's been multiple times where you've wanted to sort of jump in with your experience and go hey here's a five-step guide to you know <laughs> To achieving lots, this lots, yeah lot, lots and lots um it's um too easy to do but i but i've learned and even from a management perspective back in the days of managing teams is where you jump in and you uh might have an inclination to be a little bit too directive um uh, a little bit too uh assumptive in regards to what solution is required um often you can uh, one can get that wrong mm. um so uh the coaching uh, approach and and um, spending time having conversations with people about uh, determining what's going on for them um, yeah and it certainly encourages me to um, to stay uh, in the in that question space in the discovery yeah. space and help the person come to their own conclusions yeah great yeah that's so interesting would love to hear a little bit about how you uh, have got connected with the ice house how that came about and um, what drew you to the opportunity when it did come about? Yeah, I've been um, well, following the Ice House, uh, I, I guess, forever. Uh, and more That's and more cool. presence that um, led by the likes of yourself that uh, the Ice House has, uh, they, they naturally pop up for me um, everywhere. And moving down here to Blenheim, um, I think it's one of the, um, and, and I'm only going on something that I read, but I think it's one of the highest per capita yes. is of population in the country for ice house participation yes so so many business owners and so many um uh employees have been through the program so down here and moving here three years ago um ice house was everywhere mm, so cool. uh, and then uh a couple of people that i've worked with in the past have become ice house coaches and then uh one day on a plane back from blenheim to auckland i sat next to a guy and we just started making small talk and we found out that we knew a, a common acquaintance and we were reminiscing on what that person did uh, and started asking each other what we did and how we contributed to uh, what it is we did. Uh, by the end of that, um, uh, that uh, person was was inviting me to uh, connect with, with Ice House and, um, and see if coaching was uh, with Ice House was, mm. was an appropriate thing to do. So 
I'm a strong believer in um, synchronicity and, and when you meet people, you go with where that um, person kind of takes you on a journey yep. uh, and that kind of join the dots of, uh, of them uh, becoming a nice house coach. So it's kind of meant to be with uh, certainly with moving here and, and uh, the presence that Ice House has. Mm, that absolutely sounds like it meant, was meant to be. Very perfect yeah. sort of alignment there. Very cool. Um, I would like to sort of, make it really clear you know let's say someone's listening or watching this and goes okay what what does coaching with Craig look like uh what could they expect from a coaching session with you and what does that first step sort of look like for them certainly the first step is um I guess in, in two stages one is uh, getting to know each other and 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 know and getting an understanding for the person of um sitting and, and having a chat with me and uh, enjoying coffee with me uh, mm-hmm. is, is something that they might enjoy. And then uh, the second stage of that is, is very much about discovery and um, asking, um, seeking uh, to understand what's going on for that person and then uh, coming to terms with whether uh, I can uh, help them in whatever form uh, mm. or, or, or way possible. Uh, and then I like to outline uh, at least um, six uh, sessions, I guess, or chats, coffee chats, yeah, uh, where we where we unpack and peel back the layers of the onion in regards to uh, the cause of the situation that they might find themselves in, or the or the project that they need to help with. Mm-hmm. Uh, and okay. then uh, around the middle of that that sort of um, session of of conversations is coming to terms with. Uh, what uh, they believe may well be the best outcomes for them. I guess it's concluding the ahas and agreeing, aligning a, a way forward. And then the the back part of of a uh, program of coaching sessions is about uh, moving towards a different sort of future mm. uh, and shaping what that might look like. Uh, and then staying there with them on the journey for as long as they uh, choose to want to have conversations with me. Mm-hmm. I like to think that um, at the start of getting to know a person that I'm coaching is we spend a reasonable amount of time, uh, probably a conversation each week or each fortnight, right. and then move it out to a month and a quarter as um, as they very much uh, find the interdependence at least to uh, work on whatever it is they're doing mm. uh, more on their own so my my certainly my goal is to help a person uh, not need so much of my time yeah uh, the old again Stephen Covey saying that uh, give a man a fish feed him for a day teach him to fish yeah feed him for a lifetime mm. um is very much my my mo. It's to uh, arm a person uh, with the resources and the tools so that they ideally don't need so much of uh, my time and attention or conversations with me. Mm-hmm. And I love when we get to the point of a person really concluding that they're on the right path and uh, and uh, they they're, they're certainly um, operating within their own resources mm-hmm. to the to to their optimal level. Mm, it must be so rewarding to sort of go through all those phases and get to that point that you're maybe catching up with them once a quarter and hearing the update and just being able to see it take that little bit step forward, but knowing they're on such a clear path is must be rewarding. Yeah, there's a, a couple of three people that I've been now coaching uh, for the last three years and coming back from Dubai. And uh, mm. when we have a conversation and they might describe what it is, is going on for them at any particular point in time. In a very short space of time, they're providing the solutions. So they're coaching themselves uh, and they're yeah. uh, speaking to me uh, in, in ways and uh, referencing tools and resources that we might have, um, I might have presented to them mm. at, the, at the start of the journey. And, that, and that's really cool. It's like, wow, you're coaching yourself. Yeah. You're, uh, you, you're, you're now looking after yourself. You've, uh, you've kind of blossomed. And you, uh, uh, if I'm left asking myself, I don't really need to have a conversation with me, then that's been a success. Yeah, that's very cool. Quite cool. You can see what success looks like as well on the journey um, as a coach and for the person that has, you know, 
committed to that coaching with you as well uh, like that uh, great conversation have definitely felt like I've you know got to know you more Craig and I'm sure our listeners um, same with them I want to finish with this one what piece of advice would you have for a business owner who is looking to grow this year find at least one if not two uh, right-hand people mm. Make the business not about yourself uh, and and make the business uh, at least interdependent, if not independent, of you and your time. Mm. Uh, pop yourself out the top of what it is you do and have your business as self-sufficient as uh, the commercial metrics will allow it to be relative to uh, how much that might cost. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, I think uh, too many business owners make the business about themselves and too many business owners hold on to the intellectual property and the, and executing the, the, the key tasks, thinking that they are the most important person. So finding one or two people that may well be part of a succession plan in the future, but getting the joy out of developing that next uh, level or layer of uh, employees in your business is mm. uh, certainly I think uh, what um, the, the, the future of uh, then owning and investing and growing a business um, allows an owner to do. Yeah. Awesome advice. I feel like this conversation is the type of conversation that I needed like a notebook and pen and just writing notes. And I'm sure some of our listeners may be urged to, to do the same, but thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us and really great to have you part of the network, Craig. Uh, looking forward to seeing a lot of our alumni um, and business community work with you in future. Good stuff. Thanks for the opportunity.